Hey guys, it's Danny. Today I'm taking you along as I am setting up my Biorb Air Terrarium. I've wanted a Biorb Air for a couple of years now, but as some of you might already know, it's not exactly cheap. So I really had to budget it. I had to like really think about it. Do I really want it? Do I really need it? And in the end, I decided that, yeah, I actually do want to own it. I want to have it, even if it's not necessarily worth the money. But that's besides the point. And I will address a review, let's say, of this product in a totally different video. Today, I just want to take you guys along as I show you what I put inside, how I put it together and things of the sort. So I hope you'll enjoy today's video. Slightly nervous whenever I do these types of videos because as many of you know, I'm not very, very, very talented at design. It is just a skill that I was not born with, but I am trying to work on it. I'm trying to practice. And well, I'm in luck because today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. So anyway, if you end up enjoying this video, don't forget to give it a like. Tell me what you think in the comment section. A share would be fabulous. And hey, why not subscribe? I post multiple times a week. With that said, let's get on with taking a look at the Biorb, shall we? First of all, if you don't know what a Biorb Air is, well, it is a fully automated terrarium. At least this is how the company that produces it, called Oase, or Oase, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. So yeah, this is how they advertise it. And indeed, it has quite a few automated functions, which we'll get to. The Biorb is not made of glass. It would be very, very heavy. It is plexiglass and it comes in this huge box. I don't even want to tell you how much the transport costed. I purchased it from Green Aqua, links down below in the description, and I had to convince them that I was okay with paying the price of transport, which I'm sure no other person would be okay with, but hey, I'm a YouTuber and it's an investment for me. Inside the big box, we find four smaller boxes. So let's start with them. In the first box, we find half of the raised bottom of the Biorb. Together with a bottle of humidity mist, this is water that goes in the misting unit and they advertise it as electrolytes water, which just means pure water with a little bit of salts. In the second box, we find the other half of the raised bottom. In the third box, we find the user manual, the wicking mat, because yes, this is a self-watering terrarium. And sadly, my camera stopped working, but in the other box, you can also find another humidity mist bottle, a manual air pump, a sprayer head, a cap for the bottom pipe, we'll get to that, and of course, the power plug, which I'm happy to see comes with various removable plug units, I don't know how to call them, you will also find an air filter with a carbon sponge. They suggest replacing it every few months. I personally will not because it's such a waste. This massive block of plastic, you need to throw it away every two months? No thanks. But that's just my decision. I'm not necessarily encouraging any of you to do what I do. And lastly, we have a block of compressed cocoa peat or cocoa fiber, however you want to call it. It is exactly the same thing you can find at pet shops or Ikea as well. So this is the Biorb. On top, there is a lid with a misting mechanism, which contains a basin. This is where you put the water the Biorb comes with and the basin needs to actually be plugged in to the Biorb to work. Also in the lid, there are six LEDs, which are daylight. At this stage, I didn't find them very bright at all, but I went along with it thinking it was just in my mind. And also in the cap, you will find a fan. This keeps the glass from fogging. It keeps the environment ventilated and aerated. And whenever you open the lid, actually the fan stops. I will be sure to go more in depth about these things in a different video. This is just a small presentation of the Biorb. Before installing the bottom and of course placing the medium and plants inside, we need to unplug the misting unit and remove the basin so we have more space to work inside. The two bottom halves click into place following instructions. And the wicking mat wraps around the raised bottom like a little vest and you can secure it on the underside. To insert it in the biorb, we need to fold it and then once inside, we can unfold it and put it in place. There is a little cap that covers the middle pipe. Do not forget about it. Otherwise, substrate will go into the reservoir. 
we're almost ready to plant. It is time to hydrate the block of cocoa peat. So I just put it in a bucket and put some reverse osmosis water. And once everything is soaked, I will go ahead and mix this with some bar chips. This is my preferred medium that I used with other terrariums as well. Works out just fine for me. And the ratios that I'm using is about 60% cocoa peat and 40% bark. Time to place the substrate inside. I'm going for a slightly slanted look. This will give me the impression of a little bit more depth. We do this a lot in aquariums. I'm not entirely sure if it will create anything in the scape, but I'm doing it anyway. As a hardscape, I chose a piece of wood from the fish store. I'm hoping to attach some orchids to it, since some of the orchids I will be using are epiphytes, so they are pretty tolerant to drought. Now, hardscaping, either an aquarium or a terrarium, is not a skill I innately have. But I'm in luck, because Skillshare is here. Most of you probably already know that Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of creative and inspiring classes for people who love to learn every day, such as you and me. This is the place where you can explore, expand on or learn new things like drawing, painting, design, photography and much, much more. Since it's not easy for me to express myself physically, I was wondering if I even have a style. So I've been watching the five exercises to unlock your creative identity lessons by Andy J Pizza. Just because I can't put into practice the wonderful world inside my head doesn't mean I'm not creative. I just need a bit of guidance. I always tell my viewers what to do with their orchids to find success. But it's nice to have someone tell me what I need to do to find success in the things that I struggle with. And design, Sally, is one of them. All the classes on Skillshare are premium, which means they have no ads and new content is added all the time. If you're like me and always wanted to try Skillshare, click the link down below and the first 1000 of you will get a free trial of premium membership. After the trial, if you want to continue, it's less than $10 per month with an annual subscription. Thank you all for supporting the people who support my channel. Alrighty, back to work. So we have the hardscape done. At this point, I cannot help but notice how shockingly underlit this biorb is. But I will rant more about that in a different video. Let's carry on with the plants. First, the Makotas Petola, which is one of the most wonderful orchid of all. It is also called a jewel orchid, and it happens to absolutely love high humidity, although it can be grown in normal home conditions in pots. Then I have a few more jewel orchids that I recently acquired. You can see they're not so bushy, but in the right conditions, they will grow in no time. Arranging things takes a lot of time and trial and error for me, but that's okay. So if you're like me, don't feel sad about it. Join the club, cookies on the right. Then a beautiful Dendrobium lodigesi variegated, which is not a very common variety. I want this one to pop, so I'm gonna try to make it grow on the wood somehow. Next, we have the Mediocalcar decoratum, which looks very much like some sort of succulent grass. I'm hoping eventually it will take over the bottom of the biorb. Next, I have two Lepanthus orchids that have the most wonderful pink roots. I'm trying to mount them slightly on the wood so I showcase their roots as well. Next, a Diplocalobium christrophis. I'm sorry if I mispronounced this, it's a pretty hard name. I'm trying to place this on a bit of live moss on the wood. Then, we can't go without a Phalaenopsis. This is the beautiful Parishi, which has tiny little flowers. And of course, the Nelly Eiler. Hey, if I can aggro the Nelly Eiler in my room, maybe I can do so in the terrarium. Worth a shot. Now, it is very important to remove all of the previous medium from the root system and spray the roots with hydrogen peroxide so that we don't introduce pests and snails in the new terrarium. 
I'm also adding some moss. I'm not sure what type it is. I found it at a flower shop and I used it in a different terrarium and it's beautiful. It just took over everything, but it cannot handle drought. It only thrives in very high humidity. Then I'm adding more water to the biorb since there is actually no water in the reservoir. On the bottom, the biorb actually has a water indicator. It's a little weird because it looks like a tube and if you ever place too much water in the biorb, this is where you can remove that water using that manual air pump, but it can also act as an indicator. Time to connect the misting unit. And by the way, there are instructions that tell you how to set the mist level and the fan level. But we'll get to that in the review video. Oh, we almost forgot one thing. We have to make it bioactive. So I'm adding some springtails from the colony that I grew myself. I'll link you down below to my initial video so you see how I managed to start my colony. Now, later on, I did add a few more orchids, mainly some Dendrobium Cuthbertsoni hybrids in the back and also a tiny Cuthbertsoni in the front. And also in the back, I also added the Dendrobium Hibiki or actually half of it because I had a full pot which was dehydrating. They are all doing absolutely fantastic in the biorb, but there are some things which are not doing so great because some things are just too dry. The wood stays very, very dry, even though the humidity inside the biorb is anywhere from 95% to 99%. But as I keep saying in many of my videos, high humidity is not everything. And if it's not 100%, it means things will dry out. If you look closely on the bottom, you will see the moss drying out as well. It absolutely hates it. This moss is made for 100% humidity. If you remember the tiny little terrarium that I did with no fan and no extra ventilation, that's where it thrives. So I will definitely remove it. But the little succulent orchid is doing fantastic. So I will remove the moss and eventually hope that I can get a bed of the decoratum. Since the wood is very, very dry, the Lepanthus are not really enjoying it either. I will remove them and in the end, I will rescape everything. I think the wood is very, very large for me not being able to use it properly. So I will remove it and place a smaller type of wood or hardscape stuff, maybe rocks, I don't know. We're gonna have to see, but definitely I will rescape a few things and I will take you along. And in the review of the Biorb, I will tell you a few more things that I dislike about the Biorb. And if you think, oh wow, what a beautiful light that makes the pinks pop in the Biorb. Well, guess what? It's not the Biorb light. I added additional light. It's actually two lamps with the Gemma Grow lights shining in from the outside. Because if there's one thing that I absolutely do not enjoy about this Biorb is the lighting situation, which I find so, so, so shockingly and disappointingly dim. But overall, I have to say, I love this terrarium. I actually moved it in the house because I like it so much. I wanna see it all of the time. But anyway, that's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it was inspiring. But yeah, I will talk more about this product in a different video. Let me know in a comment what exactly you want me to focus on. But overall, I have to say, it's a really pretty thing to have in your home if you have the budget for it. So with that said, thank you so, so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you had a great time. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Subscribe to my channel for more orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, updates, and other fun orchid subjects. If you wish to support the channel, do consider becoming a member or visit the merch store linked down below in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. It's always nice to stay in touch there as well. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.